First, TSA. It is time for tonight's main event. Omar Shika, 15 and 1, squaring off against Anwar Oshana, 21 and 1, with 12 knockouts in his career. We're at the Carmichael Hall in Chicago, Illinois. A juiced up crowd for tonight's main event as we take a closer look at the careers of Omar Shika and Anwar Oshana. After an outstanding amateur career, 21-year-old Omar Shika has been fantastic as a pro. 15-1 and one in his young professional career with 10 blistering knockouts. The Patterson, New Jersey native can do it from all angles. In his toughest test in December of 1997, he won a majority decision against tough Demetrius Davis. Shika's only loss came in 1998. As part of a three-fight package in Europe, he lost a controversial decision to Tony Booth. Tonight, Omar Shika squares off against Chicago's own Anwar Oshana. Oshana, like Shika, has just one loss in his professional resume. He's 21-1 with 12 knockouts. His biggest test came last year against Thomas Tate. After a quick start, the NABF champion Tate overwhelmed Anwar Oshana. But that has not deterred the Chicago native from getting a shot at a world championship. It's an interesting matchup. How do both men size it up tonight in the Windy City? I know that he comes in to fight. I, I know he comes to fight. Uh, he don't take a back for a step. He's a brawler like me, like I am. It's going to be an exciting fight. It's going to be a war. I studied um, Moshana a lot with the Thomas Tate fight. And I see that, you know, he's a tough guy, aggressive. He comes straight forward. That's the only know way he knows how to fight. Um, I have a lot of talent, I have a lot of skills, and I don't believe that he should be in the same ring as me. Bob Papa along with Teddy Atlas in Chicago. We've already had a stare down between Sheikah and Oshana. For the introductions, here's our ring announcer, Michael Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight from Carmichael's here in Chicago, the undisputed King of Beers Budweiser presents ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights main event. This bout scheduled for 10 rounds of action in the super middleweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee is Tim Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner and introducing first. He wears the white trunks trimmed in black and weighed in tonight at 163 pounds. Originally hailing from Syria, he now makes his home and fights out of the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. Establishing himself as a relentless puncher, he is considered to be one of the top super middleweights in the world today. He comes in tonight with an impressive professional record of 21 victories, 12 by way of knockout, with a recent title shot delivering his only defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Assyrian bull, Anwar Oshana! And across the ring, his adversary fights out of the blue corner. Wearing the solid black trunks and weighing in tonight at an even 167 pounds. In his last bout, he would deliver a devastating second round knockout. His professional record now stands at 15 victories against a single defeat with 10 of those victories over early by way of knockout. Under the guidance of the legendary Bill Caton, he is hailed to be a rising star in the ranks of the super middleweights. From Patterson, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Omar Shika. Well, you see the flag that some of the fans are holding. That is the Assyrian flag. Oshana is from Syria. But he is Assyrian, meaning that he was born in Syria. I'm going to put him in a neutral corner. I expect one to stay there until I tell him to come out. The man who went down will take a mandatory eight count. Good luck to both of you. Let's go to work. The free Tim Adams with the instructions. He is from Syria, but he is Assyrian, meaning he is a Catholic. In a Muslim land, there is no actual country 
of Assyria. Assyrians are court. from Syria. He came to the United States at the age of 13. Go, Omar Sheikha, on the other hand, is of go, Palestinian go, heritage, go, but born and raised in Patterson, New Jersey. Just so you know, the Palestinians and the Syrians are on very friendly terms, and both men said that nationality and religion has absolutely nothing to do with this. Weight class and getting a world championship shot have a lot to do with it. Take a look at the knockout ratio. Oshana at 55%. Eight of Oshana's knockouts have come within the first three rounds. Shika, seven of his ten have come within the first two rounds. Oshana, not a big puncher, real game guy, busy guy. The key here is his defense is going to have to show a little bit. From two fights ago, when he stepped way up in class with Thomas Tate, who's an IBF number one contender for the world title. Well, we asked Oshana about that third round knockout loss to Thomas Tate. Teddy had a very interesting response to it. Yeah, he did, and a real fighter's response. He said, it's going to help me. And you know, I agree with him if he can make it work. In other words, he realized that he couldn't just out-gut everybody. You know, boxing's not about being just tough. You have to bring other things to the game. And you're not just going to out-busy everybody, and you're not going to walk through everybody. And if he learned from that, at this point in his career, yes, it can help him. Well, Shana felt that he learned to be a little bit more defensive, be a little bit more patient, start a little slower and move his head more. And he said he saw a lot of that in his last fight against Danny Thomas. Not the legendary comedian. But Danny Thomas is 11 and 21. Just a little bit different caliber than Thomas Tate. Except for that Thomas fight, we just talked about the Thomas Tate fight, where Oshana lost. Sika has been in with a better opposition. He's been, he hasn't been brought up with any silver spoon. He's been in there with some tough guys. Demetrius Davis, guys like that. A couple left hands from Sheikha. Sheikha spent three bouts in 1998 in Europe. This is going to be a fight. If Osana can survive the power or avoid the power of Sheikha, who I think is a little bit better power-wise and maybe a little bit better skill-wise, boy, we're going to have some fight. Well, Sheikha told us that he plans to take Osana out by the fourth round. See, that's dangerous. You see Osana throwing those white punches there? Sheikha cooperated with him. He just blocked him. But if he punches with him inside, he's going to land. Well, Shana blocking some of those right hands, although a right hook scored to the body. Well, the key here is Oshana's got to be able to go. He's not blocking that. He's just come up. Oshana's down. Go. Oh, See, he covered up, but he didn't move his head. And Sheikha did what you're supposed to do. He put it together. Four. Five. But there's only 20 Six. seconds left. Seven. So you got to look for some right? grabbing here. You don't. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round in the state of Illinois. One thing he had to learn is to grab. He's such a fighter that he'll come up when he won't grab. And that could be his downfall. Well, let's see if we can get to the end of round one. You see, he's just standing there. He's not trying to grab Sheik, as you mentioned, Teddy. And that's what, he's, that's what he has to do. And that's fun. But he survived. There's 20 seconds left. Time was on his side. To the corner of Anwar Oshana, Danny Nieves, his this trainer. Fucker. Take a look at it. Well, there it is. You can't just keep your hands up. You got to move your head. So you put your hands up. The guy mixes the punches around. He knows your hand cup. Sooner or later, something's going to get through. Left hook got through, and then the right hand. You can't just cover up. And then he stepped away, kind of like Floyd Patterson did with Eagle Mario Hanson. He stepped away. The referee hadn't stepped in. Sheikha did what was allowed. He followed his man, and he caught him real clean. Well, Sheikha said he had no problem coming to Chicago and fighting in Oshana's hometown. He said, hey, it's only a two-hour flight from Newark Airport New Jersey. It's not like I'm going overseas, and I'm just a better man. He got off to a very good start in round one. And you know what? It's funny because you hear boxers all the time talk about things that they work on, and maybe against lesser opponents you see it, but then when they get in tougher and bigger fights, they revert right back, Teddy. And look at this. Sheikha going in for the kill. Look, Oshana's game as they come. Look, he's right up. But he's out gun right now, and his defense is porous because he just covers up. You have to move. Yeah. Can you go? Yeah, it's and not you go enough just to cover up. Step back. Step He's a little discouraged here, too. Okay. But he said, yeah, the record wasn't a real, real 
loud here. Sheik is just opening up. I mean, he is just going crazy. Oshada tried to punch inside those wide punches of Sheikah. But he just doesn't have the power to be real effective. But he tried. Maybe just enough to make Sheikah think a little bit. Because there had to be something that happened to make Sheikah go defensive here. Oshada still hurt, despite the fact he's throwing some punches here. Sheikah is just waiting. He's waiting. He looks like he's playing a little bit coy there. He's making the main same mistake, though. He's covering up without moving his head. You can't just cover up. Again, Oshana blocks his shots, but up the middle because his head is still there. Gets through. Well, the one thing Oshana definitely doesn't know how to do is he does score with a left. Good counter left to the break. Give me a break. Sheik are too wide, Bob. They're wide. And as long as he shows them wide punches in front of the guy, the man has a chance to counter. Sheik is doubling up with the left, the first score, then a right hand. Again, wide punches here. When you're in close to a guy, you should shorten your punches up so there's less chance of getting counter. The punches of Sheikah, the only chance on China is to maybe catch Sheikah in between one of these wide shots. A couple of shots land by Oshana, but Sheikah looks unfazed. And Oshana's right there for the receipt after he punches. He's right there to get the return fire. Now he's moving a little bit, but not enough. He doesn't know how to grab. It's his biggest flaw right now. And if he moves his head, he can make the guy miss, and then he get a chance to punch. He can't punch because he's blocking everything. He does how not have a chance to return fire. Yeah, he returned fire there. He's taking he's got how many shots. He's going home, oh, but the oh, oh, yeah. Sheikah was short. Stay there, stay there. And hard. Fire. The shot down feel, again. Kevin, you've been down three times. Hey, you sure? Look at me. Second time Look in this round, round, he's been down. Yeah, the referee said you've been down three times. A little mistake I on the ref there. Well, well, he made three times in the fight, and he does make it to the bell. Omar Sheikha pounding Anwar Oshana. Oh, the parking guy's waving us in. Thank you. Meet the Toyota Sienna minivan. With its 194 horsepower V6. Teddy, I know obviously this fight is not of the same magnitude. Neither man is of the same caliber, but Omar Sheikha pounding on Warashana. It almost reminds me a little bit of that first Leonard Hearns fight. Remember when Hearns just did not know how to tie up Sugar Ray Leonard? Yeah, he did not. And there's one other problem that Oshana doesn't have that Hearns did have. He can't punch real quick. Yeah. Well, Oshana trying to dig in, and he is putting his punches together. And Sheikah's making the same mistake that allowed him to score on Oshana. Whoa, oh, oh, what hand by Sheikah? Oshana oh, takes a knee, and the referee has stopped him. The referee figured that there's been enough knockdowns, and it's continuing that way. He had it in his mind, it looked like. If there's another knockdown, I'm stopping this. Tim Adams stops it early in round three. It was the fourth time that Anwar Oshana had been down in the fight. Once in round one, twice in round two, and once in round three. And Omar Shika, now 16-1, and one, 11 knockouts. And I would say that this is probably the best of one of his career. Now, one of Oshana's handlers has jumped into the ring. I don't know what he's doing. This is where the security has to be better, obviously. Here come more people right over us. This is happening right over us. You need are things being thrown. Fortunately, no bottles are in the building. It just cups. And Oshana's people, some, one of his people got out of hand and went charging into the ring. I don't know if he was going after the referee or not. You need that police here. You need to lock these guys up, these clowns up. By the way, no talking with them, no debating with them. Just lock them up, get them out of here. Well, we're going to take a look at the end. You see, the two guys in the ring have no problem with each other. No, not at all. It's the fans that probably had a little too much to drink. Oshana going down fourth time in the bout. You, you can see the problem there is Oshana keeps his hands up real well, but he does not move his head. 
and he handcuffs himself. Now here you can see he's thrown, but he's thrown wide punches. And what what Sika did was he punched in between. He threw a short left hook, and he was able to catch Oshana with his right hand down. And this is right to our left. Uh, Omar Sheikha with a very, very solid effort. And it's a shame that one of the Oshana backers, and actually the guy who went charging into the ring, I don't know his name, but he right now is in the ring with Oshana. And he came charging into the corner of Oshana in between rounds two and three, yelling at Oshana's handler. And then when the fight ended, he made a hurdle right over the press table, went into the ring and crossed a lousy scene because it's no blame of Anwar Oshana or his people. Omar Sheikha was just a better man tonight. Hopefully they'll get everything restored here in Chicago. Let's check back in with Brian and Max. I'll tell you one thing, it's a lot safer in the studio, guys. Uh, that is true, Bob. What a spectacular win. We'll get back out to Chicago and talk to Omar Sheikha. We'll get back to the uh, the law and disorder out there. But, man, I, that, he'd been concussed enough. I yeah. mean, that is a spectacular win for Omar Sheikha. He's only lost now. but He comes back. He's 15-1 to a journeyman in England. This guy could be vaulted up. Right now, ranked number 21 in the WBC. Max, Sheikha could be moving way up. One thing the fans love is a puncher, and uh, Sheikha is definitely a puncher. I mean, it's clear. Great punch. Hey, what I'm excited about is last week we got Tate and Sosa fight of the year so far. This week we got another burner. And next week we're talking about Aaron Davis and Rosenblatt. Should be another really exciting fight. So we're cooking with grease. <laughs> the super middleweights going at it again. Take a break right now here on Friday Night Fights. We'll go back out to Chicago to talk to Omar Sheikha and get more on this bout. Also coming up, we've got more on Iron Mike, the glory years, Tyson and Spinks. Again, we'll be back out to They're also the ones who invented Super Live Limit and get rocking with TSN and the WWF Raw Road Trip. And that's the bottom line. The Stone Cold Set Set. Programming note for you, a special edition of National Hockey Night, Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. The heroes of hockey are at it, and the heroes of today in the skills competition. Gretzky Lindros will be there. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network. Go. First of all, uh, congratulations on an outstanding effort. You went in and you told us yesterday you take him out in four rounds. You did it in three. First of all, I'd like to say to Salam me to all the Muslims all over the world, happy Ramadan. Allah Now, well, I, I knew I was going to knock him out because I knew he's a straight fighter. He only know how to fight one way. That's to come in. And I'm back with my um, old trainer, my trainer, Al Velasquez. And we've been feeling great in the gym. And we knew we just had to bring it to the fight. We've been working on um, boxing more, getting our rhythm, taking our time. And once we heard him, we knew once I hit him with my punching power, he wasn't going to be able to take it. Teddy? Omar, the way you finished him at the end, tell us, tell the people out there, were you setting him into a trap? Were you inviting him in by just laying there and looking for a spot? Oh, yes. Me and my trainer told me, when he gets me on the rope, just let him hit me, hit me, hit me, keep my hands up. He's going to block all the punches. And once he stops, he gets a little tired, explore my punches because I have a lot of tremendous speed and power. And I knew once I hit him and connect, he was gone. Were you concerned at the end? Uh, you and Oshana had no problem, but obviously some of his fans did. Oh, yeah, I came in here. The whole fans, you know, were half Arabs. And, you know, hopefully we had to go down like this. This is business. And I knew he had a crowd for himself. But this is business. I go to anybody's backyard and take care of business. What do you got next? Well, hopefully me and my manager right here, Bill you Kane. You got me in this thing here, don't you? Uh, Bill? Oh, you seem to be fighting. No. Bill, Bill Kane, we're looking for a championship fight after this. Hopefully, I know Bill can give, get that working, and we're looking out for the WBC Championship of the World or anyone. Bring them all on. All right, well, Bill, you have to be very impressed. we got to get it back to the studio. Omar Sheikha, outstanding effort. He dusts Anwar Oshan in round number three. Let's send it back to Brian Kenny. Bob, thank you very much. A spectacular win for Omar Sheikha as he looks ahead. More now on Tyson Month in our classic segment. By 1988, Mike Tyson could say he was the undisputed heavyweight champion.